Hi there. Today I want to talk to you a bit about Cloak Search. Cloak Search is a product from Iron Core Labs that protects data that lives inside search services. And what we're going to do today is we're going to walk through the Try Cloak Search repo. This is a public repo under github.com slash ironcorelabs slash try dash cloak dash search. And uh, that's going to let us explore exactly what's happening here. Now, if you don't feel like running through this, uh, you can also go to the Iron Core Labs website. You can go to products, click on Cloak Search, and scroll down and look for the button that says Try the Live Demo. This will let you do much the same thing that we're going to do here in a moment, where you can say, oh, what does it look like if I'm going through the Cloak Search proxy? What does it look like if I bypass the Cloak Search proxy, but with data that's being protected by Cloak Search? And what would it look like in a separate thing that didn't have Cloak Search involved at all? What kind of results would I get there? It's basically the same setup in a little bit easier form, but that's not what we're going to do. We're going to do it with more hands-on approach. Okay, so with that, um, let's talk a little bit briefly about you know what Cloak Search is um, and why we bother with it. So you have an application. It's probably talking to a search cluster. If you want to be able to do any kind of searching that's like more than trivially basic, um, Cloak Search is a proxy that goes in the middle between your application and the search cluster. It can run actually attached to your app servers if you want to as a sidecar or elsewhere locked down so only certain things can talk to it. On the left side here where your application is, you're just dealing with unencrypted data. You don't have to know that much about the details. Over here on the right side in the search cluster, at least the sensitive columns are, are data that's encrypted. And if someone were to go and look directly at the data in the search cluster or to query it directly, they would see nothing but garbage. So the problem, of course, with encrypting data at the application level before you store it to a data store is that you get a bunch of garbage. And if you try and select data out of it um, on the encrypted side, you just don't get any results, right? So that's why you might want to be able to search over encrypted data. You can use a standard service like encrypted, uh, like Elasticsearch or OpenSearch. Um, and, and you can actually get back results. Um, let's stop there and let's jump in on this instead. So the first thing we wanna do according to the instructions in the repo is to clone the repository. Oops. So let's get that out of the way. We'll CD in there, and we'll take a look at what, what's there. So it looks like there's some scripts. There's a populate index script, a query cloaked search script, a query the search service, which is uh, bypassing cloaked search, a test key, and what looks like a whole lot of um, Wikipedia articles. And this is going to be the sample data here that goes inside. OK, going back to. This, if we want to use Elasticsearch, it is what we want to use. Elasticsearch is kind of the easiest thing to use because um, there's a little less messing around with authentication. We can set it to be no authentication. That's a bad idea for production, but for our purposes of trying things out, it's a pretty good thing. Uh, after we do a Docker Compose, which will stand up the Elasticsearch service and the Cloak Search service, um, then we'll call populate index, which will load that Wikipedia uh, JSON file. Uh, into the search service so that we have something to search and to do it with. And then after that, we'll, we'll query it a couple different ways, except we probably won't be using um, these exact approaches. Instead, I'll, I'll show you another way we can do this. Okay. Uh, so let's run Docker Compose here. Helpful if the Docker service is started first. One more try. Oh, come on. There we are. Okay. Okay, so that's our... Oh, 
yep, that's up and running already. And that's because I've downloaded, I've I've started up these Docker files in the past, so I didn't have to spend a bunch of time waiting for Elasticsearch to download or for the uh, public cloak search image to download. Okay, so let's leave that going there. Um, and then let's do the first thing we really need to do, which is to say populating the index. So um, Cloak Search is telling us that it's getting lots of requests and it's forwarding them through to Elasticsearch. If I pause for a second, maybe we can look at a couple of these. So um, one thing I didn't mention to you is that Cloak Search can work for multi-tenant data, meaning if you have data you want to segment with for different groups, like maybe if you have uh, um, you know different customers and you want to use different keys for each of those customers, uh, or different segments of data and you want different keys protecting different sets of data, maybe for different purposes, different applications can access different things, whatever. Uh, we call that a tenant. Um, and so each of these Wikipedia articles, there's a thousand of them, 500 of them have been annotated with as a tenant one, and 500 of them have been annotated as tenant two. When you're in a multi-tenant mode, you must specify a tenant ID in a search, and you must specify one and only one tenant ID or things will, um, you'll get an error on your request. So what happens is when, when something comes in, it's actually going ahead and, and making an adjustment to the query. It's encrypting the data before passing it through to encrypted search. And then it, so it, so it changes it and then it forwards it. That's what was happening there. Okay. So we have a thousand things that have been indexed. Um, and now for following the instructions, you know, we could go ahead and say, you know, I'd actually rather uh, maybe do it like this first. You know, we can search for titles of Japan um, and, you know, we got a result, everything looks normal. Now, if we, if we do it and we say, hey, look, but what would happen if we queried the search service directly? Um, and if we did, this, let's say, oops, and title colon Japan. Now the title is not a protected field. So the way this is configured, I'll show you in a moment uh, how it's configured. We can see here that we have this big encrypted source, and then we have a bunch of these kind of underscore ICL fields for summary, for body, and then title is not encrypted. Okay, so what what's going on here? Um, well, what's going on is, oops, let's see. Um, we're going to Elasticsearch try cloak search conf.yaml. Um, we can see how this is configured. So the index try cloak search is what we're querying. And we have the body field and the summary field are the, going to be the protected fields. Both of them use default tokenizers. Both of them have filters that are lowercase terms, phrases, and substrings. That means that even on the encrypted data, we'll be able to search for substrings, for phrases, for simple terms, and it'll lowercase everything, so it'll be case insensitive searches. Um, you can specify some other things too. We do have like uh, a phonetic matcher for Latin languages. Um, and the phonetic matcher will allow you to say like, if there's different spellings of names or, or you know, color spelled with an O-R or an O-U-R, that sort of thing. It, it'll match many of those things automatically so that you can catch misspellings. So that's what that looks like. So now that we've played with it a tiny bit here, let's go ahead and look at that readme again. Um, maybe we'll stay out of the browser this time. So this tells us a couple of things. Uh, once we've set it up, um, it tells us, for example, that where things are running. Oops, where are things running? Okay, so Cloak Search is running on port 8675, and um, uh, Elasticsearch is running on port 9200. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and try and compose some requests that we can play around with. Okay, so we'll set up HTTP um, localhost colon 9200. We'll specify our try cloaked 
search index, and we'll use the underscore search um, uh, uh, action, okay? And then we'll do the simple way of doing this with a Q equals, and then this is where we have to say something like tenant um, ID equals, oh, yeah, colon rather, uh, quote, tenant dash one. Okay, so some of these things are actually kind of important. You have to have this plus, that means it must. If you don't put the plus there, it's a it's a should have, which means it could match across tenants, but we don't allow that. Um, you specify the tenant ID. If you have a dash in the middle of a of an ID, then you have to put it in quotes. So this is the basic, like just give me a bunch of things. I'm not really searching any fields, right? So let's let's hit that button and see if it works. Okay, cool. So this is going directly to Elasticsearch. And so what we're getting back is titles that are sensible, but bodies that are not very sensible, summaries that aren't very sensible, and some weird base64 blob of the called encrypted source. Okay. Now let's switch over. Let me copy this. And let's switch over and look at cloak search. And this time we'll switch to 8675, which I think is the right thing. We'll also do a Q equals. We'll set up that same thing with um, plus tenant ID colon quote tenant dash one. Looks right to me. Let's hit send and see if it worked. Okay, so cool. Now we're going through cloaked search, but the results we get back, it's kind of this, it's the same stuff, at least title wise here, uh, but the body is decrypted. Okay, and the summary is decrypted and everything just kind of looks like it would normally if we didn't have cloak search involved at all, right? So now we can start getting more, more complicated because now we can start searching on, um, and you know, body colon has the word Japan in it, for example. If we search for that, then we'll get something back. Uh, here's this body has the word Japan, this body has the word Japan, we're getting good results back. If I take that same query and I do it directly to Elasticsearch, what I'm going to get is a whole lot of nothing because <laughs> you can't search the body, or at least there's, it's not sensible to search it. There's not, no sensible searching that you can do. By the way, if you use something like Postmaster, uh, it doesn't, in, it, it will turn a plus into a space by default. And in, instead of URL encoding it. So just watch out that if you're uh, playing with this in a UI that it's actually encoding things like the pluses in that query string. Uh, maybe there's some way around that that I don't know. Okay, so what else can we do? Let's let's go ahead and see. Mm, we've got a whole bunch of things back. Let's look for Takanaka Corporation here. And we'll do that as a phrase. Um, actually, let's go for this one, University of Tsukuba. So what we can do is we can say and body, and then we can use our quotes. And by putting quotes there, um, it'll do it as a phrase. So it'll look not just for the three words, university and of and Tsukuba, um, but it'll look for that entire phrase. So if we search there, um, I presume this is the same thing, even though I can't spot that phrase in here by looking at it but it did find that, right? Oh, there it is, University of whatever. Another thing we can do is we can say, you know, what if what if we wanna say um, wildcards? So in the case of encrypted data, uh, we support wildcards with um, a prefix, so prefix and then asterisk, or a suffix, like asterisk and then a suffix. We don't support a wildcard in the middle. You can't say like univ star ty. Okay, and I don't know why people would use a query like that anyway, but um, Elasticsearch will support it. We do not. But if we wanted to say, you know, to sue star, oops, send. Okay, we're going to find things with TSU star. So there's a TSU something somewhere in here in the body. There's going to be another TSU something. It's finding a bunch, but the bodies are big, so it's kind of hard to find by just glancing. Um, but that's it. That's how it works. That's the the whole gist of the of the thing.